What's up everybody, Big Swede, coming at you once again from Swede Studios. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk a little bit about nostalgia and, you know, that sentimental attachment we have to certain things that makes us kind of want to hold on to them or, you know, in this case, you know, maybe go out and try and find something that we used to own in the past that for whatever reason uh, we had to part with. And um, let me just preface this by saying, like, back in the day, I was I was never that guy that had a sentimental attachment to any of my guitars. They were they were tools, and you know I had no problem uh, if I wanted to get a new one. I would I had no problem selling an older one to help get that new one. Just didn't didn't bother me at all. Um, as I've gotten older though, like that nostalgia piece, you know, bugs me a little bit. And you know there are a couple guitars now that you know I look back into the past and I say. Man, I would love to have that back. Um, really, this started, you know, a few years ago when I started playing guitar again because I had taken a long time off. Um, and when I got back into it, there was there was really two guitars that were really eating at me that I was like, man, I want I want that guitar back. Uh, the first being the first guitar I ever owned. Now, it was a piece of crap, uh, Martin Stinger. It cost me like 150 bucks. It was, it was just a cheap Strat clone. It was black, white pit guard, standard Strat looking guitar. Um, but it was the first guitar I owned. I bought it with my own hard earned money. Um, and I learned how to play guitar on it. And I played my first shows as a teenager with that guitar. Um, so some fond memories and you know, it, it represents a significant period of my guitar playing time. Um, first guitar I ever owned. Now, um, I had that guitar. At the time, I wanted to get a little bit better guitar because, like I said, it, was, it wasn't it was a great guitar, so I wanted to upgrade. Um, still not buying anything great, but, you know, something a little bit better. I, you know, I was doing, like, swap meets and pawn shop stuff, um, finding other used gear that was better than what I had. So I needed to sell that guitar to help me afford the newer guitar. And I ended up selling it to uh, an old high school buddy of mine who actually still has the guitar to this day. And I recently reached out to him saying, hey, man, what, what do you think? Would you be open to selling that back to me? Now, here's the kicker is it was his first guitar, too. When, when he bought it from, from me, it was the first guitar he had ever had. So now he's got that sentimental attachment to it. And as much as I would love to have it back, I, I get where he's coming from. Um, I didn't at the time like when I sold it. I could care less. But thinking back on it now, I would love to have it back. Um, but, you know, he really wants to hang on to it, at, you know, for now. And, I, you know, I respect that. So I would love to have it, but it is what it is. Maybe we'll re, uh, re-attack down the road and see, see if he changes his mind on it. But for right now, that one is not attainable. I, I could... I, I could go out and try and find another one like it, but for that particular guitar, I would love to have the original one that I owned because I know where I know it exists. I know where it's at, and that's the one I would want to have. Um, the other guitar that I would like to have back is the guitar we're talking about today, the uh, the Schecter C1 Elite. Now, this guitar was the first brand new like good quality guitar that I ever bought uh, as an adult. Um, I had joined the Air Force at the time. Um, I wasn't making great money at the time, but better money than when I was a teenager. And at the same time, I was also joining my first uh, like real serious band. Uh, up until then, I had played in like cover bands and stuff like that, jam bands, and um, you know maybe play a show at a bar occasionally. But this was the first serious band I was ever a part of. And, you know, I wanted to get a new guitar at the time I was playing. Not a, not a bad guitar. It was, it was pretty decent. It was an Ibanez uh, Joe Satriani model, JS1000, I think it was. It was black. had a Floyd Rose, which I, I hate Floyds. That's a whole other topic of discussion. But um, I just wanted to get something new. And um, one thing that I knew is I did not want to have a guitar that everybody else had. So, like, I went into the guitar store with that in mind. I was like, I, I, I'm not going to come out with a Fender Strat. I'm not going to come out with a Gibson Les Paul. Um, the Ibanez RG series was really popular at the time. I'm not coming out with one of those. I want something different. So I walked in there, started looking around, and one guitar caught my eye. Um, it was from a company I would never heard of at the time, Schecter. Um, knowing what I know now, Schecter's been around for quite a while. Um, but at the time, I hadn't heard of them. They weren't really popular. Um, everybody, you know, everybody played Fenders and Gibsons and Ibanez. Um, but 
that guitar, it just, it sucked me in. Uh, it was, it was all black, um, really like modern and aggressive looking. The, the headstock shape was cool and aggressive. I liked it. Um, it was, like I said, all black and it had this beautiful abalone binding all around the body, the neck, the, the headstock, everything just set it off really, really nice. And one of the things that drew me to it also was the, the fretboard. Um, you know, at that point in time, like most fretboards, you had the pearl dot inlays or, um, you had the, uh, the, the trapezoids that on the Gibsons, um, the Jacksons, you know, you get the shark tooth inlays. Um, but this one, it was just, the fretboard was completely blank except for the 12th fret. It had the two diamond inlays on the, on the 12th fret. And I just, I hadn't seen that at the time. Now it's pretty common to, to have a bare fretboard. Um, but Back when I bought this in like early 2001, uh, it just it just wasn't a thing. Like bare fretboards just didn't didn't happen very often. Like occasionally, but um, most most guitars came with with inlays. So that was really cool too. Um, I decided I was going to pick it up and play it, and it immediately it just felt so comfortable. It played so well. Plugged it into an amp, and it sounded great. I was like, I'm buying it walked out of there with that guitar and that guitar became my like mainstay for all of my time with Slaves for Scores uh, until the band ended in like 2006. Um, I had other guitars in that in that time period but um, that guitar was always my main guitar and I would have like another guitar as a backup or maybe I had you know one for an alternate tuning but that guitar was my main guitar. Every single, you look through the, the picture history of the band, all the shows we played, um, you're going to find that guitar in every show, every show we played. Um, unfortunately, after the band ended in 2006, um, I was also going through a divorce at the time, and I, I, I really needed some money. I wasn't in the band anymore, so I made the decision at the time to, to sell all my gear. Um, like I said, I, I kept an acoustic, um, but everything else, all my amps, guitars, everything I sold, didn't really want to, but at the time, like I said, needed the money, um, made the decision to sell it. Um, fast forward, you know, 15, 16 years, and I start getting back into guitar again, and that's when it really hit me that, man, I want to try and find this C1 Elite again. And, you know, I started looking the used market, and I could find ones that were similar to it because, you know, the, the C1 Elite ran for several, it's discontinued now, but it ran for several years. Um, but the thing was, is every, every model year, they would change it up slightly. Um, mine, the, the headstock, it said Schecter at the top, and then it said Diamond Series on it. And then, like I said, the inlays on the 12th fret, it was just the two diamonds. Um, subsequent years, they, they changed that headstock uh, graphic, and the 12th fret inlay changed a little bit as well. Like, they still had the diamonds, but then they added some other stuff in there. And while they were similar, I wanted the one that I had. Now, unfortunately, the, I had no way of tracking down the exact guitar that I used to have, um, but I wanted to have one that was exactly the same. Same model year, everything. And uh, I, I did run across one or two through, you know, through the last couple years, but they just weren't in great shape, and I, I didn't want to have a guitar that was beat up. Uh, I wanted it to be in good condition. So, you know, I kept waiting, kept waiting, kept looking. And two weeks ago, I found one on, uh, on reverb. Um, the guy was asking for, uh, I think he was asking like five fifty at the time and $50 shipping. And I just, I couldn't do it at the time because I was like, man, in, in 2001, I paid like five twenty for this thing. Um, I can't pay more for it now, 20 years later than I paid for it when I originally bought it. I just, I just couldn't do it. So I figured, let me, let me send this guy an offer and just see what he, see what he says. And, you know, I kind of, I probably kind of lowballed him a little bit at first. And, you know, I sent him an offer. I was like, I'll, I'll give you 300 for it. And then, you know, we did some back and forth and finally ended up settling on a price that, that was fair in my opinion. Um, he probably didn't get exactly what he was looking for for it, but, you know, he, he got rid of the guitar and, and got some money out of it. Um, but, man, I was so jazzed that I was going to have this guitar again. And uh, I, I just, 
I couldn't wait. He, he dude shipped it out the next day. It was awesome. Um, I got it like a day or two later. And this this video was originally going to be an unboxing video, but I was so excited that I, I tore into it and I was like, I'm not setting up the camera and doing all this stuff. I just I want this guitar in my hands. Um, and then I you know it it was in good condition. I will give him that. It was in good condition, but it did need it did need some love. Um, it was a little dirty, like the. Um, the uh, Tunematic Bridge had a little bit of crud on it from you know from years of playing. Um, truss rod needed adjustment. There was there was some things that needed to be worked on on it. But I mean structurally it was in good condition. There was no scratches, you know, big dings or anything like anything you wouldn't expect from a 20 year old guitar. Um, but it was it was in really good condition. So you know I I did some work on it, cleaned her up really nice. Truss rod adjustment, action, put some new strings on it and plugged it in and man. It's it's like an old friend, man. Like even though this isn't the same exact guitar that I used to have, it, it feels exactly the same. And um, you know, I've been talking for I don't know how long, but quite a while. And you've yet to see the guitar yet, so let's let's pull it out. So here we are, the very beautiful Schecter C1 Elite. Um, this is a, uh, a 2000, 2002 model, um, which is around the time I bought mine. It was like 2001, 2002. I can't remember exactly. But um, actually, it probably was 2002 because, I, yeah, that's when I got back from Korea. Um, so, yeah, beautiful abalone binding around the whole thing. Love it. Um, the only, like I said, the only difference, um, mine, I had swapped out the pickups in... Um, which I will probably do as well with this. Um, this has got the the stock uh, Duncan Designs with the uh, the chrome uh, pickup cover on it. Um, I had put a uh, Seymour Duncan Distortion in the bridge and a 59 in the neck. Um, I'm going to do that again with this. Um, and at that time, I got to tell you, um, <laughs> this thing, 20 years old, doesn't matter. It's a phenomenal guitar. It plays great. It sounds great. I got a, a $1,200 C1 Silver Mountain sitting right there, and I would put this up against it any day of the week. Um, I, I love that guitar. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I'll continue to play it, but once those pickups are swapped out and this thing is dialed in once again, this is probably going to be in the number one slot. Right now, it's sitting number two behind the C1 uh, Silver Mountain, but... I think that's going to change here soon once I get them pick up swapped out. Um, she's in great shape, as you can see. Like, no, like, serious scratches or dings. Um, she's beautiful. The only other thing he did with it was uh, he changed out the tuners to some uh, GraphTech um, locking ratio tuners, and psh, those things are phenomenal. Love them. I, I might start putting these on, on all my guitars because these uh, ratio tuners are awesome. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Um, she's beautiful. I, I am so happy to have this guitar back again. Um, it's definitely, you're going to see it again on, uh, the new Slaves for Scores stuff that we're doing. Um, we'll definitely be involved in those recordings, maybe even some quarantine session stuff. As I said, the C1 Silver Mountain's not going anywhere. That's still going to have a, a big part of the quarantine session stuff, as well as my other guitars I have. But, yeah, um, I think we're looking at a new number one right here. So, I don't know what it is. Um, this was a, a mid-range guitar when I bought it. It wasn't supposed to be anything special, but sometimes you just find those diamonds in the rough. Um, and like I said, even though this isn't the same exact guitar, um, there's, there's something about this model that a lot of people like. I, I posted in, in, a, in a Schecter group that I'm part of, and... Um, a lot of people were like, man, it's my favorite guitar still to this day. So there's just something about this model that, that really resonates with some people. Uh, definitely, definitely resonates with me. And I, I'm over the moon, cannot explain how ecstatic I am to have this guitar back again. So that's all we got today, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking around this long. If you're still here to, uh, you know, actually see the guitar, um, 
yeah, uh, keep sticking around. We got some uh, some more stuff with the quarantine session. We got a song that I'm almost done with, uh, just waiting on some vocals and get a final mix done, and that'll be out. Um, I do have some uh, some studio tour stuff coming up with uh, the new gear that I promised you guys. Um, that's in the works as well. So yeah, keep watching, keep your eye open to the channel, and and uh, catch out the new stuff uh, when it comes out. We will catch you next time, guys. Till then, live life and have fun out there.